Ever wish you could control a whole radio station right from your computer? Like fine-tuning everything, noise reduction, antenna diversity, all that, just with a click. That's the world of softer-defined radio, SDR. That's right. And today we're going deep, deep diving into Thetis. It's a popular user interface that really unlocks the potential of SDR. Now, by the end of this deep dive, you'll really get the core concepts of SDR and how Thetis can really become your go-to tool, whether you're a seasoned ham radio operator or just curious about this whole cutting edge tech. Yeah, it's amazing what SDR does. It really transforms how we even think about radio. Yeah. It takes a lot of the hard work that used to be done by hardware and hands it over to software. Okay. So you have this incredible flexibility and control. So it's like having a virtual radio station on your computer. Exactly. It's like this. The hardware provides the pathway for transmitting and receiving, but the software that's where the magic happens. It does all the signal processing, mm. filtering, noise reduction, modulation, all that. Okay. So SDR really puts you in the driver's seat. You got it. So where does Thetis fit in? Well, Thetis is one of the uh, most popular user interfaces for SDR, Ooh. specifically designed for HF amateur radio operation. Okay. It acts like a control center for your SDR setup, uh -huh. gives you this visual and interactive way to manage all those software features. And Thetis, it's packed with features. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it's going through the manual, you can even operate two receivers at the same time. It's true. It's a game changer. Yeah, that seems huge, especially for you know serious radio enthusiasts. Absolutely. Imagine listening to two different frequencies at the same time. Yeah. It opens up so many possibilities. You can monitor different bands or even compare signals. It's like having an extra set of ears on the airwaves. Wow. I also saw these visual displays, spectrum, and waterfall display. Oh, yeah. What are those all about? Think of it like x-ray vision for radio waves. Ooh. The spectrum display shows you all the activity happening across a range of frequencies, so you can quickly find you know, busy channels, interesting signals. Mm -hmm. The waterfall display adds a time dimension. Mm -hmm. You see how signals change over time. Yeah. Really useful for tracking moving objects or just watching propagation patterns. It's like watching the radio spectrum come alive. Exactly. Then there's this thing called adjustable bandwidth. Yeah. Seems pretty helpful for cutting through all the noise on the airways. It is. It's like a zoom lens for your radio. You okay. narrow your focus to just the frequency you're interested in. Okay. Filters out all the noise and interference from nearby channels. Oh, got it. Especially helpful in crowded bands where signals overlap. Makes it hard to hear what you want. Right. So Thetis yeah. really helps you fine tune your listening. It does. There's also, I saw, noise reduction and blanking. Yeah, those are great. I bet those are lifesavers, especially if you're trying to receive in tough conditions. Oh, yeah. Imagine a noise-canceling headset, but for your radio. Oh, yeah. The ATIS picks out and gets rid of unwanted noise, like static or interference. You can hear those faint signals that would be lost in the background. Voice is simple. You're sending and receiving spoken words, like a walkie-talkie. Right. CW, that stands for continuous wave, is basically Morse code. Mm. Short and long tones for letters and numbers. Might seem old school, but it's super efficient. Goes a long way, even with low power. Okay. And then you have digital modes. That's about transmitting data packets. Like, think of sending text messages or even pictures over the air. So the Edis can handle all these. Yep. It's a real multi-mode machine. It even has stuff for voice processing and compression to make your transmission sound better. Sorry. Clearer, more professional. And if you want to really fine-tune things, there's Pure Signal. Okay. Uses transmitter linearization to clean up your signal, make it more efficient, and reduce interference. So Thetis is like the Swiss army knife of SDR. You could say that. But how does it actually work? What's going on behind the scenes to process all these signals? Great question. It all comes down to what we call the signal processing chain. All right, let's start with the receive path. Imagine a radio signal coming from your antenna. Okay. It first hits the radio hardware, where it gets filtered and adjusted to a level the software can handle. Then it goes to the AD converter. AD converter. Stands for analog to digital converter. It takes that incoming signal, which is analog, and turns it into digital numbers, the kind a computer can understand. So it's like translating a language for Thetis. Exactly. So Thetis works with a digital version of the signal. Then what happens? Once the signal is digitized, Thetis takes over. It processes it for display, you know, on those spectrum and waterfall displays we talked about. It also applies filtering to narrow the bandwidth, gets rid of noise, and then finally turns it back into audio that you can hear. 
So Thetis is the brains of the operation. Pretty much. It takes that raw signal and makes it something we can see and hear. Yep. And the same goes for transmitting. Let's say you want to send a voice message. Thetis takes your voice from the mic and makes it a digital signal. But before it can be transmitted, it needs to go back to analog, the kind the radio hardware needs. Right. That's where the DA converter comes in, digital to analog. It's the reverse of the AD. It translates that digital back to an analog signal that can then be amplified and sent out. Round trip from analog to digital and back again. That's it. It's amazing how much is happening behind the scenes. And all those settings in Thetis, they affect this whole signal path, right? They do. You can control how it's filtered, processed, and sent out. That's the power of SDR and Thetis. It gives you fine control over every step. You can really customize it. I can see how deep this goes. But let's say I'm just getting started. What are those first steps to get things going? The manual is great for that initial setup. Okay. First, you install the software. Then you connect your SDR radio hardware and choose the right antennas for receiving and transmitting. And finally, you do some basic audio adjustments. Make sure your mic and speakers are good to go. And the manual, it had some tips for making sure that initial operation goes smoothly. It does. Any that really stand out. One is to adjust what they call the attenuation level. Okay. So you don't overload the AD converter. Think of it like adjusting how sensitive your microphone is. No. If the signal's too strong, it gets distorted. You want to find the right level so the signal is clear but not too strong. No, Jim. You also want to pick the right filter bandwidth for the mode you're using. Remember we talked about narrowing your focus? Yeah. Well, choosing the right bandwidth helps optimize your receiver for that type of signal. So we got the radio and Thetis all set up. What next? Now the fun begins. We explore voice, CW, and digital modes, and all the cool features Thetis has. All right, so let's dive into these different modes, starting with voice operation. What are some key things we need to know about setting up voice communication with Thetis? Well, setting up your microphone properly. Yeah, it makes sense. Got to make sure we sound good out there, right? You don't want to sound like you're talking through a tin can. Exactly. Clear audio is key. Right. And they, they talk a lot about using a dummy load when you're adjusting the microphone levels. A dummy load? Yeah. It's basically like a fake antenna. It lets you test your transmissions without actually sending them out over the air so you don't accidentally blast your signal while you're still, you know, figuring things out. <laughs> Smart. So once we've got our microphone levels all set, what kind of voice processing can Thetis do? Oh, Thetis has a whole bunch of voice processing features that can make your transmissions uh, really sound much better, clearer, more professional. Okay, like what? Well, there's equalization okay. that lets you adjust the frequencies in your voice, kind of like those uh, fancy audio mixers you see in studios. Oh, so you can make your voice sound, you know, richer, or brighter, or whatever you want. Exactly. You can boost the bass, add some warmth, or... Uh, enhance the treble for more clarity. Nice. Then there's speech compression. Okay. That helps even out the volume of your voice so the quiet parts are still audible and the loud parts don't uh, distort. I could see how that would be useful, especially, you know, if you're in a noisy place or if your voice naturally goes up and down in volume. For sure. It makes your transmission sound much smoother and more consistent. Nice. Yeah. And for like hands-free operation, there's VOX, right? Yep. VOX, voice activated transmission. Uh-huh. So how does that work? Basically, you just start talking and Thetis automatically switches your radio to transmit mode. Okay. As soon as you stop talking, it goes back to receive. Really convenient, especially if you're using a headset and don't want to mess with a push to talk button. That's pretty handy. Now, the manual mentioned some other like advanced voice processing stuff, the CFC and the phase rotator. Oh, yeah. Those are those are more for the uh, serious audio tweakers. Okay. So what do they do? The CFC or continuous frequency compressor gives you even more control over the dynamics of your voice. You can really sculpt the sound. Okay. Helps keep your voice from getting lost in the noise or from distorting when the signal's strong. So it's like having a like a pro audio engineer right in Thetis. Kind of, yeah. And the phase rotator. That one helps improve the um, symmetry of the audio waveform. It's a bit technical, but basically it lets you increase your transmit power without causing distortion. So your signal can cut through the noise but still sound clear. That's impressive. Yeah. It's amazing how much detail they put into these voice processing features. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. So let's move on to CW operation. Now, I know CW with all those dots and dashes, it can be a little intimidating for people who are new to it. Yeah, for sure. How does Thetis make it easier to get started with CW? Well, Thetis really simplifies things and gives you a, a good learning environment. Okay. First off, you have options for connecting your CW key. Okay. 
You can use a straight key, an iambic paddle, whatever you prefer. Connect it straight to the radio or even directly to your computer if it has a serial port. So you've got flexibility right from the start. Right. And when it comes to receiving CW, Thetis has settings that help you get really clear reception. You can adjust the filter bandwidth, set the CW pitch to a tone that sounds good to you, and tweak the AGC. AGC. That's automatic gain control. It basically keeps the volume level consistent. Oh, like an automatic volume control. Yeah, exactly. Keeps those strong signals from being too loud and boosts the weak ones so you can hear them. And there's this cool feature called QSK, full break-in. Full break-in. What's that all about? With QSK, you can actually hear the other station between your dots and dashes while you're transmitting CW. Wow. So it's like a, a real-time conversation using Morse code. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Sounds amazing, but be careful with QSK, right? Right. It's important to use it cautiously. Okay. You got to double check your settings and be aware of potential problems like accidental transmissions outside the allowed frequencies. You want to keep your signal clean and not interfere with others. Makes sense. Can't forget about good radio etiquette. Right. Now let's jump to digital modes. I hear they're really popular these days. Oh yeah, they are. And for good reason. What makes them so special? They're super versatile. You can send text messages, images, even share files over the air. Plus, they're very efficient, work great even with low power or in tough conditions. That's impressive. Yeah. But I'm guessing setting up digital modes is a bit more involved than voice or CW? It is a little more complicated. Okay. You'll need extra software like WSJTX, which is popular for decoding and encoding digital signals. Okay. And then you need something called virtual audio cables or VACs. VACs. Yeah. They route the audio signals between Thetis and your digital mode software. Ah, so there are a few more steps to get everything talking to each other. Yeah, but the manual walks you through it step by step. It's pretty straightforward. It even stresses how important it is to choose the right audio routing and PTT control, that's push to talk, to make sure your transmissions go out at the right time. One thing they really emphasize is reducing your transmit power when you're using digital modes that are high duty cycle. High duty cycle, what does that mean? It means the transmitter sending out a signal for a longer time. Some digital modes are almost constantly transmitting. Uh -huh. And if you're not careful, that can make your transmitter overheat. Gotcha, so lowering the power helps protect your equipment. Exactly. Now, aside from the, the basics of voice, CW, and digital modes, Thetis has a whole bunch of advanced settings and tools that let you really dive deep into SDR. Stuff like antenna diversity, pure signal, even radio astronomy. Wait, radio astronomy? I thought we were talking about amateur radio. I know, right? It's pretty cool. Okay, you've got me intrigued. Let's talk about these advanced features, starting with antenna diversity. What's so great about having multiple antennas? Well, imagine you have, say, two antennas, one in your attic, one outside. Okay. With antenna diversity, Thetis can actually combine the signals from both of them to improve your reception. So it just chooses the strongest signal. It's actually smarter than that. Oh. It uses some fancy signal processing to either uh, get rid of interference or boost the signal strength. There's like a, a built-in signal booster that adapts to the conditions? Pretty much, yeah. It can make a big difference, especially in places with a lot of interference or when you're trying to hear those weak signals from far away. Now, what about pure signal, the one that uh, linearizes the transmitter? Oh, yeah, pure signal. We talked about how it cleans up your transmissions. Right, right. It's actually even more powerful than that. Okay. It uses this algorithm that constantly checks the difference between what your signal's supposed to be right. and what's actually coming out of the transmitter. And what does it do with that information? It uses it to make real-time adjustments to the signal to compensate for any imperfections in the amplifier. Mm -hmm. This gives you super clean and efficient transmissions, so there's less interference, and your signal sounds great. So it's like a, a self-tuning system for your transmitter. Exactly. Now, are you ready for the radio astronomy part? Hit me with it. So believe it or not, you can actually use Thetis to listen to radio emissions from space, you know, stars, galaxies, all that. You're kidding. SDR can do that. Yep. It's like having a small radio telescope connected to your computer. That is wild. It just shows how versatile SDR is and what you can do with it. So you could actually listen to the sounds of stars and galaxies with Thetis. You could. It's a pretty amazing concept, right? Shows the incredible potential of SDR technology. This has been a deep dive indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm blown away by all the things Thetis can do. I think we need to take a moment to let all this sink in. It's a lot to take in. When we come back, We'll wrap up our exploration and leave you with some things to think about 
as you start your own SDR adventures. So we've really covered a lot in our deep dive into Thetis, from the basics of voice and CW all the way to radio astronomy. It's been pretty amazing seeing all the ways Thetis can, you know, enhance your SDR experience. What really stood out to you about Thetis? What makes it so special? I think it's the the sheer depth of what it can do. Ooh. It's not just an interface. It's like a whole toolkit. You can really make your SDR set up exactly what you need it to be, whatever your interests are. Right. Whether you're, you know, a hardcore ham radio operator pushing the limits of communication or just starting out and curious about the radio spectrum. Yeah. Thanetis gives you what you need to make it happen. I'm with you on that. It's amazing how it can take you from like sending a simple voice message to decoding signals from galaxies. It's incredible. It really shows you the power of open source software and, you know, the ingenuity of the folks behind the HPSDR project. Speaking of open source, the manual mentioned building Thetis from source code. Yeah. What's that all about? That's where it gets really interesting, especially if you're, you know, technically inclined. Okay. Building from source code lets you customize Thetis on a whole other level. Hmm. You can actually modify the software itself, tweak features, add your own functionality. So you could have like a completely personalized version of Theta. Exactly. Yeah. It really shows how flexible the platform is. And it speaks to the whole collaborative spirit of the SDR community. Yeah. People are encouraged to contribute to help the software evolve. This deep dive has really opened my eyes to the world of SDR and Thetis. You too? I hope it's inspired you to explore it too. We've just scratched the surface here. We have. The real learning starts when you actually dive into the software, experiment, uh, you know, really explore the manual. There are so many hidden gems in there. There are. So get out there, explore, experiment, see what you can discover. And if you find anything cool, let us know. Until then, happy exploring and 73.